This week we taste the new release from the Swedish distillery Mac Mira. This is the Bjork Sav single malt whiskey made using birch sap wine casks, of all things. And to talk us through it, we welcome back the Mac Mira brand ambassador, Richard McKeon. As always, you can find some more whiskey based content, images, videos, etc., on all our social media platforms at Whiskey and Things Podcast on Instagram and at Whiskey and Things on Facebook and Twitter. And please consider giving us a rating or a review on your favorite podcast platform. You're listening to the Whiskey and Things Podcast with Dave Giles and Nick Kent. Welcome to episode 56. I am Dave Giles. And I'm Nick Kent. This is the Whiskey and Things Podcast, everyone. You've landed on, maybe accidentally, maybe on purpose. Welcome here. Way. Welcome. To, well, thank you for joining Welcome. us. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes. We're doing this kind of top bit. A little bit tipsy because we've just had a, uh, a whiskey sampling with our guest today where we've actually recorded two different episodes, tried three different whiskeys. So we're we're quite lubricated right now, I think is the correct term. Is that a good term, Nick? Lubricated is a good word, yeah. I okay, yeah. got to have lunch before we did it because I was Ooh. doing my research and stuff. I'm fine Ooh. though. I'm better than I was last week, I think. <laughs> good God, last week's. Yeah, that's going in the vault. Um, anyway. But yeah, but I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. Anyway, um, how are you, Dave? You're right. I'm not too bad. Outside hospitality is opened. Are you heading out after this? Absolutely not. I've got to go. <laughs> See, I've I've now got a stream. We're well, doing this, and I've got to do a stream. And then I've got to interview a rocket scientist for the other podcast. So I'm hoping that I, that the edge of this uh, tipsiness will be gone by then, because I don't want to make a fool of myself in front of that person. <laughs> Because that would be a nightmare. I will listen to that episode. Oh, my <laughs> God. Here's Drunk Dave talking uh, to someone who builds rockets. How does the rocket work? Yes. What? So which way do you point it? Why are they so pointy? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, what's your favourite one that's gone bang? Yes. <laughs> I love it when they blow up. Don't you like it when they blow up? I love it when they blow up. Anyway. All right, anyway. talking of blowing things up, let's uh, let's get on with this, <laughs> shall we? Um, so we're, today we're, we're joined again by our most frequent guest so far, I think now. And this is his third appearance, so I think that mm. makes him... Other yes. than Danny, who's appeared on both the Patreon episodes, I suppose. Does that count? No, it doesn't. All right, well, in that case, Richard becomes our most frequent guest. Mm. Uh, yes, Richard McKeon from MacMira Whiskey, the Swedish whiskey company... Previously, we've had him on on episode 17 back in July 2020 and episode 34 in November. Yes. Uh, where, where we tried the Special Six and the Yak Liquor, respectively. Yeah. And also, in those episodes, if you want to hear more about the, the distillery and the history, then go back and listen to those. Because we've done that before. This one, we went straight into the whiskey and uh, what they're doing at the moment. So Yeah. So, uh, without any more gilding the lily, nice. here is our good friend, Richard McKeon. Welcome back, Richard McKeon from MacMira. Uh, how are you doing, Richard? I'm uh, very well. I'm in very good spirits, so uh, I'm glad to be back and uh, I'm doing this today. Yeah, sorry we're keeping you from the uh, the pub gardens today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> recording this on the Monday, that all the uh, outside entertainment, shall we say, has reopened. So thank you for being here. <laughs> right. I did appreciate the use of the word spirit there. I did too. Um, great pun. <laughs> Great pun. I don't know if it was intentional, but uh, it made me smile the moment you said it. What's new in the Mac Mirror world then? Uh, what's going on? I'm gearing up for the return to relative normality. I think lots of plans, hoping to get back out on the, the road and, and visit customers and, and do tastings here and there. We're socially sensible, of course, mm. and, uh, and permissible. Um, but yeah, for, for us, I think that we've had a new whiskey come out since we spoke last time. I think I was here to talk about the Yak Liquor. Mm. We've had uh, Bjork Sav, the next in our, our seasonal range to come out. And um, we've got uh, something else uh, bubbling as well, uh, one of the, the moment range that's due in the uh, in not too distant future. Ah. Anything you can tell us about that? Um, I can tell you that <laughs> the cars involved are, um, it, it, it will have a, a similar profile to uh, to one of our releases in the past that I've enjoyed very much. So, um, and has gone down quite well, I think, in the, uh, broadly speaking. So, yeah, should be, should be a, a good one. I've got high hopes. Fantastic. Since we last spoke, Richard, my brother has discovered McMira. Now, 
annoyingly, he doesn't listen to the podcast. Otherwise, that could have happened a lot quicker. And I, as much as I'm disappointed by that, I'm glad at least he found it. So my mum got us both whiskey advent calendars. Right. Uh, and his favourite whiskey within the, the 24 days of whatever calendar he had, I think it was the master of one of the Master of Mort ones, uh, was the Mac. Okay. Yeah, uh, and he's since he's, he won't stop going on about it now. He's got he's got himself a full bottle of it, and uh, he's very much into the old Mac Mirror. So, uh, depending on how our tasting goes today, I've got his birthday present sorted. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. No, very good. Uh, the, the Mac that's a, that's a that's a great one to uh, to get into as well. I think I actually I might have helped write some of the the descriptions for that advent calendar as well. Oh, really? So nice. if, he, if, he did, if he did take the time to to read anything that came with it and didn't just open the whiskies up and uh, get stuck in, he may have read. Uh, something of mine. So what's special about the Mac? The Mac's designed a single malt whiskey, 40% ABV, uh, and designed to uh, be a versatile, but also uh, sippable, just um, as it is. And when I say versatile, what I mean by that is uh, bartenders and mixologists, you know, able to use it in, in various different concoctions and, and cocktails and whatever recipes they come up with. Uh, it's uh, exclusively matured in American oak casks, so it's got uh, heaps of, of vanillas and, and caramels you know, akin mm. to bourbon. So something, Nick, that I think, you know, you'd probably quite like. If uh, mm. Have you tried the Mac yet? I've not had the Mac yet, no. no I can I can pop a, a sample in the post to give oh. you a, a, a taste oh, if you like. Yeah. Um, but I, know, <laughs> I know you like your bourbon. So, yeah, this is, um, this is uh, something like that. But very much um, our spirit character, but with, you know, that sort of uh, extra vanilla and extra sort of caramel sweetness that comes with American oak casks. Yeah, that sounds right up my street. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm waiting for Steve to invite me over to have some, but obviously we, I can't stay over. That's the annoying thing at the moment. So uh, it's it's a tough one to go and have a whiskey tasting with him. But uh, alas, I'm sure Uber we'll do it well. soon. Yeah, it's yeah. a long Uber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could sleep in the van. Is that yeah. illegal? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you're talking about getting out and doing tastings. Do you have any idea of you guys and McMirror discussed when you might be able to do tastings in person again? No, so we're, we're gearing up to when we know we'll be able to do it. <laughs> right. So we're basically, yeah. So we're sort of, we're, um, uh, we were talking just this morning in our, our sort of our, our weekly catch up meeting, um, about speaking to shops and things and just sort of trying to, you know, book some prospective dates i guess um for, for the sort of summertime i think once once people are allowed to drink indoors at pubs i can't remember what the date is for that off the top of my head now but i think um around that sort of time would be okay um but as long as wherever the venue is has sufficient space for people to be you know socially distanced still and um and, and mm. sensible i think um as long as people are allowed to be in and uncomfortable doing it uh, will be there I, I expect you know i'll be there in my mask walking around pouring things for some time to come mm. but looking forward to drinking in 3d with people again i've been in front of a computer screen as we all have for so long um just i'd like to be in a, a room you know with with some fellow whiskey fans or, or new newbies yeah i just want to smell a bar again that's me <laughs> <laughs> that smell of a bar i've missed <laughs> even the stale the stale beer on the floor um yeah. the smell of the wood Everything about it, I, you know. You could the, recreate the, the bar feel by just, you know, pouring some some uh, squash on the floor, getting some sticky floors in your plate. And <laughs> Sometimes I don't out, need yeah. to, you know, don't need to do that on purpose. To be honest, <laughs> but, uh, the bubble I've had uh, on this uh, on this thing. But um, mm. so in the meantime, <laughs> um, you're doing your. <laughs> You're doing uh, videos online still. Is that still a weekly thing from McMira? So we, since, since lockdown began, we I think we were the, um, and I always say I think we were, just in case somebody steps in and corrects me, <laughs> but I, 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 I really believe we were the first people to start doing virtual tastings. Uh, and since then, we've done, we've had a number of different shows under various names. And when I say shows, I mean sort of live streams that we've been doing on YouTube mm. and Facebook. Um some of those have, have sort of we've stopped doing now, like our breakfast show on Saturdays. We're having you no know, like cooking with with whiskies and things like that. Um, but now, so now we, we're doing um, monthly tastings. So anyone that wanted to get involved and and try our core range whiskies plus you know whichever uh, seasonal is, is most recent, um, you can do that. You know macmira.co.uk be able to find our monthly tastings that come out. Um, but we're doing uh, uh, every. Well, it's just changed now from Fridays to Wednesdays, but when the most recent lockdown um, came in, at least in, in England and Wales, um, we started doing a, a virtual pub on Fridays called the Mac Mirror Inn. 
nice. your, uh, your local V pub. We've uh, we've we've framed it. Um, so that that we get you know um, industry guests on or, or people from creative industries, but um, for the most part whiskey based. They come on, we talk for an hour, we have a couple of drams, and um, you know pretend that we're in a pub for a bit. Um, and that's what we've we'll be doing all the way up until Friday, just gone. But now that people are going to start venturing back outside. Um, we've moved it to Wednesdays at a, a later time to Wednesdays at seven o'clock. Whiskey um, Wednesdays. Perfect. Whiskey Wednesdays. Yeah. So that's, so that, that's what we're doing from, from now on. And then that and the monthly tastings, I think we'll stick with that, but we're hoping for, well, I mean, you know, I've been speaking to you guys about uh, uh, perhaps doing a little something together in, the, in yep. the coming weeks or months, fingers crossed. Um, we're doing a, a whiskey and uh, a Swedish whiskey because it'll be ours and Swedish cheese tasting at some point soon with, um, uh, an outfit, a Swedish um, shop in in London. Yeah, so we're we're trying to do other things to keep it interesting, and you know anyone that does want to join a virtual tasting because they can't leave the house yet for other reasons or whatever reason. Sorry, um, we'll try and keep something there so that there is something that people can tune into because not everyone will be able to go out straight away. Do you think that the lessons you've learned from lockdown of running online events? Do you think that will continue in some capacity even? once everything is back to normal, because I'm imagining you can reach people that you would never have reached anyway, which must have been a bonus for you. Oh, massively. I think uh, the, the important part there that you see, you know, in some capacity, it will be, I think um, it's not going away. There'll be some brands, some of the big brands that were, you know, I don't mean to be unkind, but quite slow, perhaps in getting into virtual tastings to react to it. Um, I think they might quite quickly sort of turn back into, you know, however they were doing things before. But for us, it's been very important and a great way to reach people on oh, and to be perfectly candid on quite a low budget for us as well, not going yeah. out and, and doing big shows. The people that can't leave their house, as mentioned a minute ago, um, for, you know, COVID reasons, isolation reasons, protection, that we'll, we'll need something for those guys. But there are also people that are whiskey fans that haven't been able to get to shows and festivals, you know, for years or, or for, you know, for whatever um, reason they have, you know, can't really leave the house. So um, this lots of people have been able to get into it. I don't know if you guys attended either of the, the Summerton festivals, the Summerton Whiskey Festivals. No, right? I heard, heard about the second one. That was, I only, only heard about that, but uh, I heard it was a good day. Yeah, it was. It was. And um, so Dan Humphrey, the, um, the founder, um, I was speaking to him a little while ago, and he said that when they had their first virtual tasting, first virtual festival, sorry, um, he had lots of emails from people that, hadn't been able to leave their house, you know, for, you know, they might have um, disabilities, you know, agoraphobics, anything that uh, love whiskey, but weren't able to get out and attend anything. So never felt as though they were part of this enormous community that exists. So they might not have even known that it did, but then all of a sudden they've got this platform where they can actually get involved and, um, and stuck in with, with everyone else. So I think it's important that it does continue in, in some capacity for us. Our plans are very much geared towards we, we will continue doing our monthly virtual tastings, um, I'd say indefinitely, or at least until, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense anymore for whatever reason, but really, you know, they're for us, they're here to stay. And, um, and the shows, the various shows that we do here and there, we're going to start taking them on the road when we can. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll keep them just so that, and not just to, to cater towards people that can't get out of the house, you know, for, but, um, but definitely with those guys in mind as well. Absolutely. Nice. We found that with the, the whiskey show last year as well, though, didn't we Nick? the online one? It was just, it was so nice to see all this, all these people connect, and we learnt so much. And we had no idea that, obviously, we knew whiskey shows were a thing, but we'd never attended one. So it was a really nice, it was a nice intro for us without feeling overwhelmed as well. Actually, doing it online was a kind of nice way of, of just acknowledging, all oh, right, this exists, and you can you can be anonymous for a couple of days if you want, and then as you start seeing who the people are, you can start saying hello and and getting to know them and just be you know feel it out without. The noise and the and the you know the drama of being in a in a big mm. exhibition hall, yeah. yeah, and the proximity as well with yeah. other people that you know might have even been an issue for someone before, but certainly would be um, a concern, perhaps or at least something that would be on your mind, you know, going forward for some time as well. So, absolutely, whiskey bots roll out. Anyway, should we try this new whiskey then? Let's so, crack on. Let's, let's crack, crack on. on. Right, this week's. Whiskey. Macmira Bjork Sav. 46.1% ABV. Classic Macmira there. Yes. The yes. yes. One of the first things I noticed. <laughs> the ABV. Do you want to remind everyone why that is, Richard? We've got a 461 
Yeah, so sure. there's um, a, a few reasons into it. The one that um, I think the most important to, to me, not necessarily as a, a whiskey purist or fundamentalist or anything, but um, yeah, anything, uh, whis- whiskey below 46% ABV um, will often be um, chill filtered, um, which is, you know, this, this process where you're trying to try, trying to stop a whiskey once it's been stored in, you know, uh, in a cold space, um, or, you know, before it's come out onto a shop shelf somewhere. Um, so to stop it from clouding, you know, once the temperature drops in it. So uh, anything anything below forty six percent will go through that process. But while you do that, you 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 draw out lots of properties that were in that was in that whiskey while it was still in the cask, and why you know while the whiskey maker, the master blender, whoever it was, was sort of creating the the recipe for a release, and then all of a sudden you've stripped away lots of properties from it and and textures and things as well. So um, anything above forty six percent doesn't need to be chill filtered. So we we know that we don't want any of our whiskies to be below 46% ABV. So when Angela's making her recipes and the various different casts that go into it, um, she designs all of them so that they will be at the right level, the right balance, the right flavour profile for what she wants to present um, mm. at 46.1% ABV. Yeah. Um, some of the moment ranges that we have come out of the ABVs can be a little bit different in there, but for the seasonal range, it will always be 46.1% ABV by design. Yeah. Um, nice. You're talking about Angela Dorazio there your master blender i was wondering what hand does she have in the actual initial spirit she's your master blender mm-hmm. who's your master distiller and does she have any hand in that taste yes. as well her title yeah master blender chief nose officer is her uh, official title um she looks after quality control but you know from um from start to finish basically right. as well so it, even with um even with some of the cast management that we have as well there are various people that that have these roles but she's the head honcho she looks after everything really sort of overseas because she needs the spirit to be distilled to her specifications for what she wants to have and um and then the cast management as well um she has a hand uh, in that yeah. huge amount of influence in there as well because that needs to be managed so they can come out towards her specifications and requirements for the end of it as well so yeah, yeah now she she's involved from start to finish Amazing lady. How do we get her on the uh, podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, um, I'll see if I can put a, a word in for you and, and no, speak to her. I'm sure that. she'd be, yeah. she'd be quite happy to, I expect. So I'll, um, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. That'd, yeah. That'd be nice. Nice. Still there. Yeah, yeah. Next time you're on us, let's have four of us next time. Yeah. She's a big character. She's a big character. She's um, And whiskey isn't her... You know, them, same as any master blender that's out there, anyone that makes whiskey, there's, you know, whiskey isn't their only... Um, interest or any hobby she loves dancing she um, considers herself a bit of a, a bohemian as well so you know nice. she's um she's a very interesting person and uh lots of skills outside of, of making whiskey so would be a good person to have on for sure amazing fantastic sounds like nick nick's a good dancer <laughs> i'm a mover mm. <laughs> i'm all right i forgot a bass in my hand <laughs> let's talk about the packaging i love the mcmurray packaging and um with all the seasonal ranges they're kind of differentiated by the, the new colour. Lovely lime green on this, which I'm loving. Mm. And as well, like all your releases, you've got the recycled oak cask bottle top again, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. And a great is, pop. Yeah. Oh, oh, beautiful. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Beautiful. Sustainability is um, massive for us. And we actually, we won uh, another award this year with the icons of, icons of whiskey from the Whiskey Magazine for sustainable distillery of the year in the rest of the world category. Oh, yes. Nice. Um, yeah. As well as distiller of the year as well, or, or distillery of the year with them. So um, two big things to put on the email footnote. Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're we're hoping that one day we're included in in the icons of whiskey, and we're going we're, we're working our way into it. We don't know we're how, but we're gonna we're gonna work. Out, yeah. We're gonna make our own category up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Blaggers, blaggers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> chief, chief blaggers. Yeah, exactly. Put that at the yeah. bottom of our emails. Yeah. <laughs> so, what does Angela have in store for us? Bjork Sav. What does that mean? Uh, Birch Sap. So uh, the. The main influential casks of this um, were, were previously uh, previously held at Birch Sap Wine that we got from um, Glitterthan Vin, which is uh, a Swedish sort of artisan winery. I would have spoken about them uh, with Yak Liquor because we got the uh, the Yacht wine from them, the hunting wine from them, the oh. cranberry and also lingonberry and uh, blueberry wine. Uh, this is Birch Sap wine that we've got from them that we bought and uh, seasoned uh, a number of casks with um, and then put our whiskey uh, into them. 
Um, but there's, there's various different casts that have gone into the makeup of this, but Birch Sap Wine is the, is, is the main one, the main show. Yes. Nice. I've got to say, that's, I've had to taste, so I can, I can say that it is a lovely whiskey. But Birch Sap Wine, to me, it, I don't know if I'd pick that up off the shelf. I might be a bit wary of that. I'm not sure you can find much you know, Birch Sap Wine on the shelves over here anyway. There might be some bottles here and there, but it's, it's not particularly... Um, common to be able to find it although lots of people do make it themselves but there's quite a lot of um craftsmanship and art goes into the the making of it um, and yeah. but chap itself is it's not um uh, it's not this sort of sticky brown resinous sap that jurassic park would have you think you know sap yeah, um, looks like it's, yeah. yeah it's far closer to you know, water in sort of a appearance and texture and um i'm yet to try any pure um birch sap um, but from from what I'm told, it's you know it's like the the purest, freshest water you know you'll 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 ever try supposedly at least. All right. So if I see a, a birch tree leaking in Manchester, should I have a lick? <laughs> so I leave um, <laughs> Maybe, maybe I suppose. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, I'd ask it first. <laughs> Get consent from the tree first, yeah. Yeah, um, but but to get the to get the sap out, uh, wow. you only do it. Uh, I think it's it's once a year. There's a couple of weeks that you have a, a window for doing it. Um, and sort of as as springtime comes around, so it's you know um, perfect for a, a spring release whiskey. Um, to get about two weeks a year, the the in the, the sort of dormant season of a, a tree's you know, um, annual cycle, you have all the the sap goes down into the roots. And then as spring comes, that sap starts traveling up the trees to go and, you know, help it get, get the energy it needs to grow shoots and leaves and things. And you've got this two week window where if you, you drill through the, the bark and into just into the heartwood, not too far. And I should say as well, the tree needs to be of a certain size because you need to allow that tree to grow to a certain size before you start harvesting anything from it. Um, you drill into the outside of it a little bit. You can sort of you tap it then with what is basically a, a straw um you know not quite a straw but thereabouts and um, and then have something a container underneath to, to capture it this, um, rem- this reminds me of the hunger games you've seen that part of the hunger games where she gets sent that little thing she puts it in the tree and out comes the water no i think so i've only seen it once that would yeah. probably be that would probably be the tool that you you need they're not i, I want to call it a spigot but I, I have a very good feeling that's that's an incorrect <laughs> name for it but they're hard to get hold of over here because no one really does it but in um in america and canada where people tap um maple trees all the time you oh, can yeah, get hold of sense. these little things so i expect that's probably what she would have used absolutely anyway i have just had a little sniff of this while you were telling us all about that which this smells so good <laughs> this smells so good straight away i was thinking pineapple cubes or pear pear drop sweets uh in with some brown sugar it's just a really great smell it's a great smell i'll take pineapple cubes and uh, and pear for sure so that um Pear for us, you should be able to find in, um, I'd, I'd say, most of our whiskies. That's an important part of our spirit character. Okay. Basically. And, and the seasonal whiskies, if I didn't say it before, we were talking about the Atlicker. The seasonal whiskies are about um, sort of retaining and keeping our spirit character there and present, um, but showcasing it in different ways. Um, so, you know, and, and sort of a, aligned with or attuned to, you know, whatever the prevailing season would be. And in this case, obviously spring, because we have spring, summer release, and then an autumn, winter release. Mm. Uh, and this is spring in a glass to me. Um, it's it's is, so fresh. It smells yeah. so fresh anyway. I haven't had a taste yet. There's a thing in Portugal called green wine, Vina Verde. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of that. And this smells similar to that as well. It's so sweet and refreshing. Mm. You can drink it all day long, that stuff. It's, it's pretty crazy. But um, just a freshness to this whiskey. It's unbelievable on the nose. I, I, I've yet to taste it. Nick's saying it's good. I was definitely getting pears, um, apples. I was also getting like a vanilla custard fudge oh, type thing as well. Custard, yeah. That vanilla, yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, some fudge in there, isn't there? Mm. Vanilla fudge. Anyway, I'm going to start tasting this now, Nick. Me too. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Oh, this may be my favourite McNeary yet. I think your brother might buy one of these. I'm going to buy it for him. Oh, <laughs> for his birthday. I told you. There you go. One sip. Well, that's Steve's birthday present done. Yes. <laughs> Thank you listen, very much, so Richard. Won't, won't, won't ruin the surprise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that is delightful. It's really light. It's, again, because spring's here. In the pub garden, where hopefully we'll be allowed in there for a while now, 
this isn't going to be too heavy for the sunny afternoons for me, mm. in my opinion. It's, I it's agree. nice and light. Another thing I got as well was the sweets, sherbet lemons. Yeah. That, the texture and the lemon cello as well. Oh, yes. Kind of absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. I had citrus down in my notes when I first received this. So I had lemon peel, but sort of like a, a sugary lemon peel, I think, in my mm. notes somewhere for it. So lemon sherbet probably would have been closer to it. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, you said about, you know, fr- the freshness to it. It's, it's crisp. Mm. It's crisp. It's, it's fresh. Uh, green apples for sure. But I think on the, on the nose, something that one of the first things that, that I noted was this um, like v- sort of creamy vanilla texture to the nose. I'm a big fan of, of texture and whiskey and, you know, having a good mouth feel to it, I think, you know, which is why I like whiskeys that are, haven't been chill filtered. Although there are whiskeys that have, that I do still, but this yeah, on the nose, you can get texture straight away. And I think that transfers perfectly to the palate for me as well, because it sort of clings to the sides of your mouth and the, and, and your tongue, this um, sort of lingering clinging texture coating your mouth. Absolutely. There's a herbal essence to this as well, not the shampoo. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's 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 some fresh herbs in there, almost mint. There's almost like there's a sprig of mint yeah. in there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. There's a fresh mint. Yeah, like right, you just brush your teeth. Yeah, oh. I could brush my teeth with this. Mm. I'd whiskey, agree with that. whiskey toothpaste, mate. Forget whiskey the candles. Toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> this, that, that herbaceous sort of that herbal side of things. Um, it doesn't always come through in the form of, of mint or, or eucalyptus for me, as, as this one does. But oh, eucalyptus, um, yes, yeah, a herbaceous sort of um, undertone, almost like in a background to it. That's an important part of, of not just our, our spirit character, which I said is, is needs to be present in our season. You need you need to know it's a Mac Mira. It can't just be it's been finished in something else, and all of a sudden it just tastes like that thing. Yeah, um, you need to be able to to find like a thread throughout the range so that you, you know there's some consistency to it. Um, but yeah, tex- texture and, and and freshness for me is the the, the biggest thing uh, with it. But that that herbaceous side um, is very very important, and that that adds to the balance of things. So Angela, the reason that these these cask recipes that are, are as, as complicated as they are and different sizes of casks, different types of, of previous contents. Um, it's, it's because Angela's trying to find that balance and trying to, you know, she needs to put one more cask of something in because that gives it that that extra little spice that she needs or that yeah. little bit of that herbal note in the background to add some balance to that sweetness that, we, that we've both, you know, we've all, all, all focused on. There needs yeah. to be something in the background to it as well so that it's complex and it's not just a one-dimensional whiskey. How many bottles get made of the seasonal range? Yeah, so the, the seasonals will be anywhere between 15,000 to 20,000. Right. So um, they're limited editions, but I wouldn't go so far as to say, you know, they're, they're highly limited in their number because, yeah. you know, that, but once that they're gone, us, they're gone. What, once they're gone, they're gone and they won't be done again. They, they might be done, you know, some of the casts Similar. that have been used, you know, might be used again in things and, and made a feature off, but they will never be the same recipe again. Um, so, yeah, so 15, 20,000, that, that takes us, um, you know, a year two years perhaps across the, the world to sort of well, wherever we operate at least to, to move. So, you know, you don't have to you know, fall over yourself to go and get one, but once someone's run out, there's, there's a chance that they might not get um, yeah. anymore. In. Absolutely. This is delightful. This is yes. really great. Whiskey! The cast that are involved in this, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's ex-bourbon 200 litres, there's Oloroso seasoned American oak, 128 and 200 litres, birch sap wine seasoned, Swedish oak and American oak, a hundred to two. It's, it's so complicated. Yeah. What goes there, into these? There's more than that as well, because there's also, um, I think it was 25, 30 litre casks that we used as well that had been seasoned with uh, with birch sap wine, as well as the the, the larger casks, the, the barrels that we used, the 200 litre ones. Um, I think we used 25, 30 litre casks and they had, um, so, so I, I will say actually some of the, um, oldest whiskey that we've we've got has gone into this so some of the whiskey that was was spent some of its life in birch sap wine casks uh, is uh, is 14 years old which uh, for oh. us is that's old for us you know we, we only started well 20 years ago or so and lots of that that stock from the early days was was sold you keep a little bit back obviously for the future but um much of it was was sold 
um, yeah. just to help get some some revenue in and, yeah, yeah, uh, it, and keep, keep things going because we were the first Swedish distillery around. Yeah, you know, you've got to you've got to keep making sure that money comes in. Yeah, uh, until people find out who you are. So um, so yeah, so fourteen years old in this. So this is I think this wow. is the old. It's a around the prestige from the moment range had some 14 year old whiskey in mm. um but this i think might be the oldest whiskey that's gone into a seasonal have you got any age statement releases out like mirror it was all non-age statements so you got more freedom no what's we tucked had, away we, what's tucked away in the uh, <laughs> bodine mines what's happening well we had uh, we had a limited edition run of a, a 10 year old whiskey that came out um i think before my time it was launched but i think you know two years three years ago perhaps that's the only age statement whiskey we've had, and I don't think there are any. Um, I don't there's any intention of, of of going back to it. There might be a one-off thing here or there. There's nothing I've heard of, but um, it, it's not something we'll we'll be doing. Um, I think uh, most of your your listeners, your subscribers will will know, but not everyone uh, does. But you know, if you put an age statement on a bottle, that has to, that represents the youngest, you know, single drop of whiskey that's gone in there. Um, and what that means, it limits you. If you're looking, we're a flavour-led distillery. And uh, and I'll, I'll say this before I go into this one. You know, I think it's, it's quite convenient for someone who works for a company that doesn't use age statements to talk about why they're not necessarily that you know in, important or, or, or relevant these days. But um, it is it, for us, it's a genuine thing. So we're a flavour-led distillery. If we were to put um, an age statement on a bottle, so you know, 10 or 12 years old, because that's what most other people do, that limits the casks that Angela can go to, to um, to try and find that balance that we I was talking about. Because if a master blender is putting a, a new whiskey together, and they think, oh, this, you know, everything here is twelve years, thirteen, fourteen years, but what this really needs, you know, these hundred casks, let's say, um, that's a large scale, but it just needs one single cask of seven-year-old whiskey, this sort of younger, vibrant one, just to balance it out and and offset some of those those richer flavors um they can't do it because they're limited to you know um to the ages that are there mm. it's so she's an you know an artist with more colors on her palette because we don't use them so she's able to to choose whatever car she like and an important thing as well for us in particular on that front because we use so many different sizes of casks and i mentioned with this one we've used all these 30 liter casks um, if you if you're maturing something in a 30 liter cask and it spent its whole life there, something might be ready after four years or five years that would have taken 10 or 12 in a larger cask because you've got a, a greater liquid to you know surface area ratio and, and development and maturation can happen a bit faster. Mm. So for and Angela uses those casks all the time, um, it, sparingly here you know and in large quantities there. But that you know, we'd have to put um, four years old on some releases, even <laughs> though even though ninety eight, ninety nine percent of it could be you know in double digits. But yeah. because all of a sudden she thought that this this small, spicy Swedish oak thirty liter cast that's got these perfect properties she wants, um, because we don't use age statement, she's able to use it, and you know the flavour is achieved and the profile is achieved, um, and she's not limited in what she can do. This is fantastic. I'm a it big is. fan. So one one other thing we've started doing with um, seasonal whiskies from now on, from the Bjorksav onwards, is we're going to put, um, and we've started putting, sorry, um, percentages of the types of casks that have gone in. So we've always had quite a transparent um, approach when it comes to saying what's gone into the whiskies that we have and the, the types of things that we've used. Nick, you mentioned about, you know, the ex-bourbon cask and the Oloroso cask and everything. You've been able to find that information online because we, we post it. So we have product sheets for each of our whiskies and uh, and it always says the types of casks that have gone in and often it will say the sizes of those casks. But it doesn't get any more specific than that. But from this release onwards, we're going to have the percentages that have gone into it uh, with the seasonal whiskies. So um, with this one, we've had um, 30% of the casks were ex-bourbon casks, 24% were ex-Oloroso, 20% were uh, birch sap wine casks and um, 18% are other types of seasoned casks, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is vague, but I do have the information on it. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well we say salt okay. and pepper. So uh, 
Angela, Angela, des- Angela describes them as, as her um, spiced casks. Ah, so, okay. You know, so pepper, pepper, not necessarily in there directly, but loosely, you know, the, the spice world. The Colonel's secret recipe. Um, is what yeah. like, right? <laughs> and spice world as in talking about spices, not the, the Spice Girls movie, um, <laughs> which obviously we all are familiar with. Um, and then um, the, the remaining 8% for anyone doing the maths and wondering where the 8% has gone um, is uh, Swedish oak casks. Um, but that, that 18% um, was uh, wild raspberry wine casks. So if anyone's wow. tried the Skogs Harlan or the Skog Shalon, if you pronounce it as a, <laughs> as you read it, as a Brit would, um, that was a, a white raspberry wine cask uh, whiskey from our, our moment range. Oh. So um, see the 18% wild raspberry casks, um, some cherry wine casks from Kirsch, um, uh, cherry wine producers in Germany, and then uh, some uh, American oak casks as well. So sort of a bit of uh, a spice and a bit of sweet will come from that, that remaining sort of 18%. But that for me is, um, as a whiskey fan, not as a McNeera man, but that transparency for me is, I love seeing that. I love, I love being that. able to say that we're doing it. Um, and I think especially, we you know, we're talking about um, no age statements and whiskeys and things. So I think it's, especially if you're not someone that's in lots of active whiskey clubs and groups and people are saying, oh, I know that this has gone into this whiskey and that's in this one. Um, I, I would forgive someone for being a little bit apprehensive, perhaps, about whether or not they wanted to buy a, a no-age statement whiskey. You know, if they didn't know any, any better or any more detail about it, and you've got something else that you've got this tangible, well, that's 12 years old, I know something about it, I can feel sort of safe there. So having transparency and saying what's gone into whiskeys with no-age statement on, I think, helps not only educate people, but give them something to, um, I don't know, get their teeth stuck into or to understand a little bit more about what's in that bottle. And for me, I think that's great. Um, One company who um, I've always really liked um, is Compass Box. Right, Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they make blended blended whiskeys, blended whiskey or or, or blended malts, whichever they're releasing at that time. Um, And something they've done for a long time and they wanted to do more of, but have been um, limited in what they can put on their, their bottles, I believe, at least at the time of this recording. Um, they're, they're very transparent. And if you look on their website, you'll see what they put, you know, the, um, the quantities of what casts and where, which distilleries those casts have come from. And I always thought that's fantastic. So the fact that we're doing something like that now as well, I think is great. And Compass Box are a flavor led company. You know, they're yeah. not about age statements and, and single malts because obviously they're, you know, they're not a distillery. Um, but so having that transparency gives people something just to see and sort of hold, you know, almost hold, I guess, but, just sort of a, a tangible, as I said, um, but yeah, that's a uh, bit of information. Okay. Yeah, it gets the interest up, gets the enthusiasm going. I love all that stuff, trying to pick out where tastes come from. It's obviously still learning, you know, still getting my nose and my, my taste buds around things and, you know, knowing where that taste might have come from um, is a big deal for me. Well, that, yeah. so Birch, Birch Sap, when we spoke earlier, and said, you know, I haven't... Um, uh, tried birch sap wine, you know, if we, not something you'd see on a shelf and go, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll grab that. Mm. Um, I, uh, in this, you know, I've tried lots of back mirrors, so it's perhaps easy for me to do it, but I can find that there's something new in here and I can sense that birch sap wine, even though I've never tried it before. And I think an example quite a few people could probably relate to would be sherry. I'd never tried sherry until, actually, I think during, during lockdown, and now I've done a couple of sherry tastings, but mm. I've been drinking um, sherry matured or sherry finished whiskies for so long that I thought, you know, when I try sherry, I'll know what that's going to be like. And when I did, apart from a few little nuances and a couple of subtle differences and complexities here, there weren't any surprises for me at all. You know, Oloroso sherry tasted exactly how I thought it was going to taste, right. having had lots of whiskey that had been matured in it. Same as Pedro Jimenez and, um, and Manzanilla. So, so this, I think, if you if you drank you know a few drams of this and then tried some Birkshap wine. You'd mm. say, "Oh, there it yeah, is. no, there's that familiarity." Yeah, I get that. So it's it's definitely noticeable in there, even if you haven't tried the uh, the original juice before. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you were talking about transparency there, and and, and Nick dropped in KFC, and you dropped in the Spice Girls because there is nothing more <laughs> transparent than uh, than KFC on their uh, on their Twitter profile, who finally revealed who the uh, twelve herbs and spice were uh, oh. in their in their recipe by following the Spice Girls and seven guys called Herb. And finally, we found out who those seven, uh, the, the, the secret recipe of herbs and spices that go into KFC was. 
<laughs> and, and I love that transparency that they finally did that. For me, it was a real eye opener and it's given me more respect for, for KFC when I'm eating it. Fantastic. Yeah, we well, more people should be doing it. Yeah. Absolutely. But sometimes you just don't want to know what's in it. You just want to enjoy it. I don't know what herbs and spices and meat is in my Donna kebab, for example. I just want to enjoy it sometimes. But... <laughs> I'm not trying to make a Donna kebab, and I'm, I haven't done a Donna kebab podcast for a while, to be yeah. honest. Kebab uh, some things be coming it. soon to a podcast provider near you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking about taste and stuff, I haven't had. I think I had a taste of sherry when I was a kid because my mum used to have it and all that kind of stuff. But who, I was listening to Jim McEwen, who was talking about it a few weeks back on some interview. He's like, "Who drinks sherry anymore? Is there going to be less sherry casks around?" You know, there, um, there already is that. Who actually drinks sherry? Yeah, there's been there's been fewer and fewer casks around for for some time. So you'll find um, uh, the vast majority of casks of sherry casks out there will be seasoned with something. So your uh, various distilleries and whiskey makers will contract by quantities of just of, of sherry as is, and then season their own casks uh, with it for anywhere from you know from two months to a year to however long it might be depending on you know their specifications but yeah because fewer and fewer people have been drinking sherry i think the uk was probably like the biggest market if i'm not mistaken for for sherry for for some time and then people just started going off it and um yeah and, and they started making less of it obviously in turn mm. or, and, and, and so yeah it can't get hold of of I don't want to say authentic sherry cast and imply that others aren't because, you know, once you've seasoned something with it, it's got that influence to it. But um, very hard to get hold of, you know, what, what would have been sort of classic sherry casks. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. And thanks Thank for joining you. us once again. Uh, I, I think we're... Uh, Third appearance. Yeah. You're, well, you're at the top you're, of the league, I think. Oh, yeah. You are. I think you yeah. are. Well, glad glad yeah. to be back at any time. Come back any time. Um, this is where it's three o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm having a, a, a dram. So uh, <laughs> very very happy to come back any time. All right, welcome. next next time we're not doing nine a.m. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, said AM. It, he said any time, Nick. He said any time. <laughs> You're listening to Whiskey and Things. So you can watch the full uncut video of that interview with Richard McKeon. In fairness, there is a cut because we stopped recording and realised there was more to add. So there will be a cut, but it's only because we stopped and started again. But that's over on our Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash whiskey and things. And now you can sign up for a whole year without having to do a monthly payment. If that's how you prefer, you can do that. I'm still tipsy. This is not good. Anyway. That's a little bit of a discount on that as well, isn't it? Yeah, for, for people who are signing up, I believe so. Mm. Uh, and also, this is a new new news for our patrons. If you're already a member or if you're planning on becoming a member, for those of you who are on the mid or the higher tier, you're now entered into the Dream Whiskies draw. <gasps> uh, so, yes, there's a chance you might win a 700 quid bottle of whiskey this month. Every time there's a Dream Whiskey draw, you're going to be in it just from being a patron. Yes. Dream Whiskies, of course, we had Paul Martin on a few weeks ago, if you we remember did. those episodes. Um, he talked all, all about Dream Whiskies. It's, it's like a little competition thing. So we're entering that. And if you're in the top tier, you have a chance of winning that. A medium tier. A medium tier, sorry. A medium tier. Don't, don't forget that. I, mean, I, don't, don't I forget. love the medium tier. It's my favourite tier. Is it really? Yeah. I Your brother's it. a bottom tier. That's why That's why you were never going to say that, was it? <laughs> there we go. It's, it's, <laughs> There's a nice bottle of Hibiki on offer this, this month as well. Yeah, £700 um, bottle of Hibiki, uh, which is crazy. Crazy. Nice. So, nice, yes. nice, nice. And you can also find out more about McMira over on McMira.com. Do, do you know what? Hang on a moment, Nick. It's funny we mentioned that Hibiki because, thinking about it now, that new Bjorksav has a Japanese, we didn't mention this earlier, but does have a Japanese whiskey quality to it, doesn't it? It Actually does. Actually reminds me a bit of the Hibiki we had earlier. It is quite floral. It's light. Yes. It's, it's, it is it's quite Japanese. And it's, it is it's quite character. Japanese. Um, Interesting. We didn't mention that in the, in, the, uh, in the tasting, but we had a little discussion afterwards and that's, that came out. Shh, shh, don't tell anyone. Let's, let's pretend it's just a good smooth link, Nick. No, no. This is all about clarity on this show. We're all about clarity. Transparency. The, yeah, transparency. We had this little, you know, we press stop on the recording, then we keep chatting. <laughs> we were, you know, and then it came out. It did have a Japanese quality to it. All right. Yes. But anyway, back to the Mac Mirror socials. Um, of course, MacMirror.com. You can find out more. Um, at MacMirror UK or at MacMirror on Instagram and Twitter. 
depending on where you are in the world or who you want to uh, follow. They also do some really good live streams and stuff on YouTube as well. I'll be putting links in the description for all that fun stuff. Absolutely. So at the moment, uh, obviously we, within the description, there'll be a link for the whiskey exchange for this new bottle. But if you go on their actual website, the McMira website at the moment, and spend £150, and I know that's a lot of money, but if you do that, you will currently get a bottle of the Scorpions whiskey that they've done as well, Scorpions Rock Band. Uh, which we've we've tried uh, today, and it's it's really good. Yeah, uh, and that's worth seventy odd quid. So a free bottle of seventy quid whiskey. Um, we'll be doing a, an episode on that whiskey at some point. Yeah, at some weeks. point. In a few weeks. But spend one hundred fifty pound at the it's moment on the McMira website. A free seventy quid bottle of whiskey. That's a pretty good deal. It's nice too. It's really good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we just call it the tasting cherry wine or oh, cherry wine casks. <laughs> hmm, something a bit different we enjoyed it but um, obviously we'll uh, address that when the ed- episode comes out um, but absolutely. yes 70 quid for spending 150 quid go for it absolutely so there we go thanks Richard for coming back on and uh, ah, we love McMira we are big fans you're listening to Whiskey and Things these British people talk funny yes we do governor uh, that's <laughs> 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 I've committed to that sting now. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's it for this week. Thanks for listening. Uh, we appreciate you being here as always. Yes, uh, thank you. And please consider pressing that share button if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, next week we'll be back as always on Wednesday. Sharing's caring. We're, next week we've got another great episode. We re recorded an interview ages ago for this. Yes. For Earth Day. And that's all I'm going to say. We've had this in the can for a while. It's a good yeah. one. It's a really, really good one. So yes, um, hopefully see you next week, listeners. Thank you. Thank you. We're waving on camera. <laughs> We're waving like they do at the end of TV shows. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm okay. reading my notes as if the, the credits are rolled in on the news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Um, Cheers. Only one thing to say. What he just said. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. coming. <laughs> Whiskey and Things has been brought to you by And Things Productions.